Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the Midtown uh, New Development Area Board meeting for Tuesday night, November the 13th, 2012. I apologize for the late start, but our clock is running behind. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and roll call, please. Here. Ms. Hurd? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Dr. Jameson? Here. Chairman Ivey? Present. At this time, well, I'd like for everybody to rise for our invocation and pledge of allegiance. Our invocation will be led by Mr. Tooley, and our pledge of allegiance will be led by Ms. Cato. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come into this to lead the city into a new time of refreshing. We ask you, Lord, as we go and embark upon this year, that you guide us and direct our steps and let us have peaceful outcomes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to take this time to uh, introduce our new uh, elect, mayor elect. I know we're going to um, get to that. Okay, you going to do that? Yeah. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, at this present time, I want to uh, deviate from the role agenda a minute. Um, I would like for Commissioner Reynolds to please come up to the podium and I would like for the Vice Chairman to come down with me to the uh, podium. Thank you. Also, I'd like for the board to stand also. Okay. My, my, my. Commissioner Reynolds, it, it comes a time in people's life when they really have to show their appreciation. I know you have really been an inspiration to me as well as the board, and I believe they joined me in this sentimental moment. And sometimes words are not enough for what can be said. So on behalf of the Midtown Redevelopment Area Board, we would like to take the time and show you our appreciation, something that you can cherish over a lifetime. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Reynolds, the city of Daytona Beach Incorporated, July 1876. Award of appreciation presented to Commissioner Cassandra Reynolds for outstanding service and dedication to the city of Daytona Beach Midtown Redevelopment Area Board on this day, November 2012. Thank you for all the work you've done. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was wondering why Ivy was so adamant about me coming to this meeting. <laughs> I was all prepared to tell him that I declined to give any input on anything this late in my turn, <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> oh, this is really beautiful. This is really nice. Have y'all seen it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will cherish this always. But what I cherish more is the work that this board has done and I know will continue to do. You have done a lot and I can say that I have the license since I once sat in that chair. <laughs> 
So what you have done and what you are doing is remarkable, and I am so proud of it. Please keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Reynolds. <laughs> now, at, at this time also, I would like to take the time out to recognize our newly elected mayor, Mr. Derek Henry. Will you come say a few minutes, please? Thank, thank you. I, I came by because uh, I one first thing I want to say is uh, uh, congratulations to Commissioner Reynolds uh, on you know retiring. She's done an, an admirable job not only uh, when she served on this board but obviously when she served as commissioner and this particular community which you all are serving uh, in this capacity is is always in need of good leadership and she provided it for a long time. And my presence here tonight is just to send a message to you all to let you know uh, I, I realize as mayor that, that you're going to be all over the place uh, and I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep up with that schedule. But I want to let you know that the work that you're doing, I value it, uh, I respect it, and I, I intend to, to support it uh, to the fullest. And that, that comes from the bottom of my heart. And I have an open door policy to talk with you and anyone in the Midtown area because while I wasn't raised there, I was born and raised in Daytona Beach, and that area is, in my opinion, uh, critical to us pushing Daytona Beach forward. So continue to do the good work that you do and, and know that you have my support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, in case you didn't know, tomorrow night is the installation of the new um, mayor, along with our new sitting city well, commissioner-elect, um, Ms. Paula Reed. I believe that ceremony starts at 6 o'clock, so if you are available, um, I would like for you to come out and show your support to the new commissioner and to the new mayor-elect, as well as the um, other commissioners that has been elected to the city, to lead the city forward. Um, with that in mind, uh, I would like to move back to the agenda. Um, item number five, our approval of minutes for October 9, 2012. Chairman. Yes. I make a motion that we accept the minutes with the necessary corrections. Second. Um, just a minute. Are there any corrections? Dr. Jameson. Um, on page 10, um, sometimes I miss, I miss speech, but the second paragraph in the bottom, she stated it looked like a fantasy. I'm hoping I did not say that. But if I did, I did not intend. I, I was hoping I said that it looks ambitious, not as a fantasy. So I kind of take exception to that word fantasy. It looks ambitious. That's what I think. If I did say it, that's what I intended to say. If it's not any more changes, so noted. We had a motion. It's been second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Next we'll have um, staff report. Um, we have code enforcement. But before we go to code enforcement, uh, Charles, I would like for um, Captain Capri to come up. Um, I want to thank him for coming out uh, this evening because um, last month he was scheduled to come and he did um, respect the board and made a call. So at this present time, I would like to turn the floor over to Captain Capri. Good evening. Good evening. And it's good to see you all again. Uh, I have with me here tonight Lieutenant Blanchett, who on Sunday is going to be Captain Blanchett. All right. He's going to be replacing me in District 1. I am moving over to the Detective Bureau, so I'll be running all Wonderful. the detectives. Wonderful. Okay. So, so I'm not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I was going to get with Mr. Ivy, see if he could take me shopping, because I need to get some new clothes and I'm sharp and dressed. So I want, I want to look the part. So, right. But no, really, all jokes aside, I really appreciate what you guys have done as a board. Uh, I've been a police officer here 23 years in January, and I've seen Midtown evolve from what it was with the open-air drug markets mm -hmm. and, and the recklessness and, and, and to where it's gotten today with stores starting to pop up and properties getting cleared up. I just think it's headed in the right direction, and that's directly as a result of all the leadership on this board. And your complaints come through, and we're, we're doing the best we can on our end to clear them up. I try to answer every phone call, you know, whether it's day or night. 
Uh, we had a very successful bike Toberfest. We worked very well together. So, I mean, we have an excellent relationship mm -hmm. with this board, and I have no doubt in my mind that uh, Captain Blanchett will not continue that support with, with you guys. I can guarantee you that. Absolutely. So we're, we're looking forward to good things, and like I said, my numbers will be the same. I'll just be able to do a whole different thing. I'll be citywide doing detective stuff, mm -hmm. trying to solve some of these cases. Well, uh, Captain Capri, we appreciate all that you do in this community and in the city. <coughs> Only a phone call away or an email away. My phone's on 24-7. Let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on here in the, in the district and, and, and in uh, Midtown. The report just came out about an hour ago, so I got the latest numbers for you. We are down right now in our district 12% on Part 1 crimes compared to last year. So that's huge. That is. Last summer, we've had a lot of issues in the summer where we had a lot of juvenile crimes last year. So we, we created a... Uh, we called it uh, Operation Summer Heat. We ran it from like May when school got out till uh, right after Labor Day, and and this year we just pounded the streets. We put police officers out there. We saved money throughout the year to fund these special operations and using some federal funds, and we really we really tore it up out there. And, and we we've seen a huge difference. We're almost double to where we were last year at this time in the district. I think we we're down like seven percent last year. We're down twelve, so we went five points in the right direction. Now, if you look at individual categories, these these, these numbers are amazing. Uh, last year we had three homicides. We only, got, we only have one right now, this year. So you're looking at a 67% reduction. Um, and if you look at the auto thefts, we're down 19% in our auto thefts. This is a big one here, burglaries. We're down 29% in burglaries okay. in the district. If you look at uh, our car breaks, we're down 29% in car breaks. Uh, our robberies, this is a very important one because robberies are usually violent crimes. We're down 25%. So we're down 15% in our, in our property crimes. We're up 7% in our person crimes. But overall, we're down on crime. And we're doing more with less. And I can tell you, you have a commitment from the police department that no matter what we get, funding we get, we're going to work 150% for the citizens of this city. And, and, and the men and women of this police department are working around the clock to ensure your safety and the success of businesses and, and just working with everybody together. I think you can't do it. I always said police work. We're not going to solve everybody's problems. It's got to be a partnership between the community and the police to be successful. And I, I've seen over the past couple of years, especially since Chief Chitwood took over, and the whole new offense we're running here, I think we're heading in the right direction. I, I, I just can't wait to see what the future holds for the city of Daytona Beach, especially Midtown. I mean, I drive around Midtown a lot. And I, see it, I see families playing in the parks. I see redevelopment in, in, in some of these, these uh, cultural centers. Uh, I think you guys are heading in the right direction, and we're going to be back 100%. I can guarantee you that. I'll open the, f the floor and not any questions. Ms. Hurd, I know you got something. <laughs> well, I, I have your telephone number, therefore I can't can oh. call. Oh, okay. But I do have something to tell you. Mm -hmm. And congratulations for your promotion. Thank you. Oh, con congratulations for your promotion. And I'm sure that if you need my help, it's a call. I appreciate you. It's, you. I have your number on my phone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love those 2 o'clock in the morning calls about the dogs barking, but we're on it. <laughs> we'll take care of it. <laughs> That's a joke. As you know, we've worked a long time as a board yes. developing our, our master plan, which is based on a, uh, it's a pedestrian viewpoint of, of our part of Daytona Beach. Uh, uh, you know, people sitting on porches and saying hello to their neighbors and just walking around and meeting. Uh, some months ago, Chief Chipwood wrote an article. Wrote an article, or was was quoted in uh, one of the local newspapers saying that we had to deal with crime. Uh, the I'm going to say stigma of. Of the, of the or the pride that is taken in having been in jail and we have developed a physical code that would create a community of just nice people walking around and enjoying other nice people we're going to need some help on those items that the chief addressed in his article some months ago how do we go about getting it started well we can sit down and meet 
and see what we need to do. And if we, anything that we can do from a police standpoint, you got our support. I can tell you that. Just we can sit down and work at, have to look at what you're talking about and see the my, specifics. My thoughts would, would simply be that, that we, we need your, your support, not just here occasionally, but we need to work together and figure out how we could use our resources mm -hmm. with your uh, well, with the important resources that you all have mm -hmm. in order to bring this code forward. To I'd have to look at it. The ability of the community. This is a great place. Yeah. I agree with you. I have to look at it because I don't know the code you're talking about. What, what, I have to look at it. I'm sure the chief will look at it. The command staff will look at it, table it, and staff it. And we, 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 we're going to support you any way we can. I mean, we, we uh, it, every day we're out here, whatever whatever we need, whether it be an event, Biketoberfest, or just an, uh, a complaint of some speeding or something, quality of life issues in the neighborhood, we respond immediately to them. Uh, by the way, I'm not, criti not being critical no, of, I know. of your old efforts. I'm no, I didn't think you were. I just have to look at the code you're talking about. Whatever you need, we're going to support you. Thank you. You got, you got, you got our, our, we got your back, Miss Benjamin. I'm gonna take care of that. Five sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Five twenty-nine Orange Avenue. Five twenty-nine Orange Avenue. <laughs> Blowing leaves in the street. <sighs> we'll have a talk with that gentleman right there. Thank you. I'll make sure I go over there personally tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna turn the mic over to Captain. Oh, oh yes, sir. Oh. Well, I was just going to say, okay. first of all, we want to congratulate you for your promotion. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you for the work that you have done. There has been a big improvement, and we do want to thank you for that. Well, we're not going to stop, I can tell you right now. Yeah, but we just want you to know that everybody isn't against you. All right. <laughs> I can tell you, I, can tell you I, I don't think anybody, I try to take the, the negative people and ignore them and work with the positive people. And you're not going to please everybody, but I think we're pleasing 90% of the people. And my concerns right now, the most important thing, less the safety of my officers is paramount. But other than that, it's the citizens because we work for you. And, you know, we work, you know, you, that's what you pay us for. You know, you're, you're the customer. And we're going to do whatever we can to get the customer satisfied. Customer's always right. So I can tell you that. I've been here 23 years. I'd like to do another 23 years here if I could. So, and I might as a part-timer, maybe. <laughs> directing traffic in front of the safari on Saturday night to help Mr. Ivy out or something, whatever he needs, you know. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Captain Blanchett, let him say a few words, because, like I said, he's taking over Sunday. But uh, he's a good man. He's been here 20-something years, too. So, Hello. It's going? good to, uh, to put some faces with some names. Unfortunately, when you're a lieutenant on midnight shift, I don't get to see too many of you very often. Um, oh, usually okay. you, you all are in bed when I'm up, up and working. Um, but I look forward to, to working with all of you. I've got some big shoes to fill, I can already tell you. Um, the things that uh, Captain Capri has done within this community and the bonds he has made, I'm hoping that I can jump right in there and foster those bonds. Um, one of the questions that you had in reference to the code, I was thinking about it as I was standing there. And as law enforcement officers, when we've been in the game as long as Captain Capri and myself, we tend to think linear. And that's why it is so very important to foster these bonds between a community because you see things a little differently than we do. And it's good, good to get those ideas and good to get your, your understanding on the current problem so that we can refocus our efforts and try and foster these, these relationships so that we can work together and get things done. This is a very good thing because with Captain Capri going to the Detective Bureau, we now have another facet. You all know him. He's going to help me out. I can reach out to him. So not only do we have the patrol out there helping, yet we can have the efforts of the Detective Bureau out there as well. So this is going to be a very positive thing for Midtown. Once again, my name is Lance Blanchett. I get the official title of Captain. It will happen on Sunday, Sunday coming up. And I'll tell you, once I get all of my numbers and everything set, I'll be more than happy to drop off my business card so you have all of my contact information to include my cell phone, and you can get a hold of me anytime, just like you do Captain Capri, okay? I just ask for a couple of days, let my extensions get settled at the PD and find out what my numbers are going to be before I, I give you some numbers, okay? Will right. be all right with everyone? Yes. Okay, um, thank you very much. Sir? Before you leave, um, Captain Blanchett, um, we got a problem still on Garden Street dealing with um, and that city owned property the yeah and a, a, a gray house next to it I think they're scheduled to be demolished aren't they I thought, that, I thought the one the gray one we was trying to work something to he's demolish it some four for drug money to get it he's getting you some drug money to get it bulldozed do you know okay. the address it's right there at the corner of uh, yeah I, I don't know the address right okay. off hand but uh, it, it's, it's pretty bad I got a couple calls on that this past week too I just didn't disturb you but uh, 
that's going on. And in the county of uh, Brevard County, and also in Opelika, which is Miami Gardens, they have um, enacted a sagging um, pants law. And I was wondering, can we ever present that to the city and try to get that ordinance up here in our city and maybe to bring respect around also um, into the city? Uh, something could be looked at, but um, the law is on the books yes. and it's working in other um, areas. That's something we definitely take a look at. You know, we, we, we've mimicked, a, uh, mirrored a lot of laws with the, um, the synthetic drugs mm -hmm. of their, their city ordinances. This is something we can look at. Let me reach out to Brevard and Opelaka, see if I can get a copy of theirs okay. and see how the wordage is. And I can always send that to Tony Jackson, have him take a look at it for the legalities. And uh, maybe we can put something together for that. Uh, just a minute, uh, Commissioner? You have it? Okay. Oh, you got it? Okay. Good. Yeah, appreciate it because I believe uh, Senator, uh, past Senator from Orlando, was trying to put it on the books as a state law, Senator Sipling. I, I was yeah. something about that. I've heard about it in the past. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. So, so um, we might can try to mimic that and continue to clean up this area for it can become a walkable community. I just want to say, I'd like to say that it has been maybe a month ago, we had a young lady here who presented the information to the commissioners about sagging pants. Okay. She had all of it. Did she? Yes, she did. Do you remember but her name? No, I don't, but I can okay. find. Okay. But uh, Commissioner Henry will give you the information. Okay. But I just want you all to know that we did have a young lady to present it to the commissioners. Very good. Very good. We will certainly, I will get with Commissioner Henry, and we'll certainly look into this. Thank you. Well, any more questions? Yeah, Ms. Cato? One no, okay. Uh, one other thing. When would we have uh, uh, the comp report available, Comstat report re available? I can give it to you right now. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the most latest copy. Okay. How you do everything usually paperless? I'm thinking I hit the printer button, turn up the one page, and print out the whole report. Okay. But I will need the one page. That's all right. Uh, You're not in court. 529 orange. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I got it. Yep. We'll go over there tomorrow. I'll go over there. That's, that's, that's the full report right there. Broken down by zones and maps and everything. And Thank you. And we invite you all to Comstat Thursday morning, 8 o'clock. At our first party. Every two weeks we have, and it's this Thursday, 8 o'clock. Uh, they serve breakfast. You get to uh, see firsthand what we're doing or, you know, it's, if you've never been to a Comstat meeting, it's real interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. Yes. It's 8 o'clock. I invite you to come. We're actually going to have a, uh, a gentleman there 8 o'clock Thursday. He made a movie called Heroes, uh, about the Heroes of the Badge. And mm -hmm. it's basically a movie he made about fallen police officers. He's going to do a quick little 15-minute presentation on that, and then we go right into our Comstat meeting. Okay. So, and you'll be, it's very informative. And you can ask any questions you want. We have an open forum where you can ask questions at the end of, of what's going on in your neighborhoods. And you'll see exactly what crimes are happening, and you'll see what we're doing to com combat those crimes. Okay. So I, I, I highly recommend you come by and check it out. How often do you have? Every two weeks. Every other Thursday. Yep. So you have it this Thursday? Yes, yes 8 o'clock in the, in the morning at the 129 Valor. Just come downstairs. They'll mm -hmm. give you a visitor pass. Come up to the second floor. And uh, they serve breakfast there. You know, eggs, bacon, sausage. I mean, I mean, breakfast. Frank Heckman's <laughs> cooking it, but, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a real breakfast, not yeah. kind of No, it's good stuff. <laughs> donuts, because we got a lot of cops, there's a lot of donuts. <laughs> Question before you leave. Now, the code enforcement is part of the police department. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I must say, at this time, I'm not pleased with it some of the work, most of the work they're doing in Midtown. Okay. Because um, I know I have reported the same thing over and over again and nothing is being done. And as I stated last month, there were only two vendors during the Thune Cookman Parade and Vendors were all over the place. I mean, there were only two, two vendors that purchased permits. Okay. 
Okay. But there were vendors all over the place. We have addressed that for next year. Uh, yes, but I'm saying that New Look on the corner of Carolina and MMBB, CJ's, Fulton and MMBB, and the car wash on the corner of Lane and MMBB, basically every two weeks, if not every week, they are set up outside. With my understanding, tell me if I'm wrong, that if your business, you bring your business on the outside, you're supposed to have a TPA yes. from the city. Now, if, if you sell items that are different than what you currently have in the store, you should get a TPA from what I understand. Wait a minute now, because that's not what we've been told. I can you say on different. It. Right. But I thought if you came, if you come out on outside, I think it depends also on the event. If it's, if it's on that master plan, for the I'm, right. I'm talking about just regular um, we'll weekly. Let me let me get with Hector Garcia tomorrow, and I'll call you. Call me tomorrow. Call I me, will call, call you me tomorrow morning, like late morning, and I'll get with him after comp we have our meeting in the morning. So call me after ten. I will be there in the morning. No, that's Thursday. Next Thursday, Thursday. I Thursday. would be Thursday. there. Come by and have an answer for you Thursday. I promise you. Is it mostly on the weekend? It's Friday night. Friday yes. Saturday? Yes. Saturday. I mean, it's okay. It's okay if you tell everybody that they can come out and sell their products. We'll be fine. Yeah. But as long as I understand what the law is, I'm going to complain. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We will certainly look into it and we can address it. We'll, take care. well, I would like to hear from you. Okay. Thursday. I will have answers for you Thursday. You're going to bring spaghetti for us, right, for lunch? Mm -hmm. If you want it. Tell me you're going to make me spaghetti and meatballs. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you promised me that for three years already. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. You have my phone call number. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you Thursday, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I will be more than happy to, to find out for you. And Thursday we can sit down and we can talk about it. And we'll come up with a solution. If well, it, just it's open for everybody to be out there. We'll put our bike guys on. Yeah, well, I've got a couple of guys in mind that can take care of it. Well, Mr. Garcia hasn't. I got the, I got some other we'll talk guys. To him tomorrow. Yeah, we we can we'll touch base with him <coughs> and find out. Exactly. And I oh okay then I'll talk to you later. Okay. Th right. Thank Anything you very else? much. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, Thank you Kat. very much. All right. All right. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Good thank night. You. See you Thursday. You. Be safe. Um, moving on to. Code enforcement. Has everybody had a chance to look over their uh, staff report from code enforcement? Um, Ms. Kato. 879, Dr. Mary McLeod Bassoon. What? Make me know where this and what it used to be or. That's Beacons and Meeks. Third to last, that one. Yes, where is that? That's Beacons and Meeks, isn't it? No, no it's 879. It's, uh, it's the corner store. It's the corner store right there. The, it's, it didn't come out oh. too good in the pictures. It's a uh, green building right beside uh, Thompson Funeral Home. I think that's where mm -hmm. it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this is New Look, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's not new look. No. Okay, thank you. Eight thirty-five. Yeah, it's, it's, if it had a printed out a little bit better, you could tell no, what I it can, is. When you say Thompson, I can see from that one. Set. Yes, yeah. sir. So if it if it's not any um, questions, and y'all know my motto, uh, code enforcement, we can please address it with the code, like you was gonna make your call. If we don't have any other uh, questions on the light and moving act. I oh. I one. Okay. Two of one South uh, Martin Luther King. And I understand this, uh, the one you said, you said this is the uh, car wash that's on the corner here. Make no yeah, that's, uh, Martin. John, that's the Johnson service station on MLK. Headed towards. Uh, what, he, what he's showing in this is uh, where he had the, um, the cover, the carport. Uh, cover there that's been removed because he put it up without a uh, permit.
This is Johnson Service Station on right. MLK. This two. The one, not whether the other ones, uh, MLK and Orange Avenue. Okay, just this one is. One uh, right. Right. I have a question. I was asked by a resident if a car is disabled, meaning it can't be driven, but it has a current tag on, but it has flat tires and can it be towed from their property? If it's parked in the street, it's in a space, it's in the, the space is on the city street and it's in front of their home, but it's inoperable, but it does have a current tag. In the medium, or is it, is it right it's there, in the street. Right street. Well, we have a junk vehicles provision in the, in the code of ordinances, and I, I can't tell you offhand whether the vehicle would meet the criteria. The fact that a vehicle has a tag doesn't mean it's not a junk vehicle. A vehicle can have a tag. I'm sorry, a vehicle can have a tag and still uh, qualify as a junk vehicle, but there's a list of criteria. I don't have that uh, language in front of me. But the, that would be something, Charles, that you could follow up with the uh, police cool. department with. The reason being, I don't know the law exactly about police uh, doing their stops in the morning in the school zones. But there's an issue on Keach Street. This young man drives tractor trailer trucks. And then there's a white van that's been sitting for about three years right in the driveway where the teachers go to park at Campbell. The wheels are flat on the ground. You can see the cobwebs and everything. And the cops on the motorcycles park in between the tractor trailer and this white van. People should know they're in the school zone that time of morning, but they step out and tell you to pull it over. I don't know. I mean, I thought the law said that the cops have to be seen but you can't see them headed north or south until they step out and tell you. And when you look, you see the motorcycles. But that vehicle has been sitting there, I know, three years. A white van, tires are flat. I looked at the tag. It has a tag that's good until 2013. So does it just get to sit there? Because there's the medium, the street, the car, then the sidewalk and the property. And it's my understanding if we go and tow cars out of people's yards that are disabled, unrepairable, that have sat, why is this car being allowed to just sit in the road? And then I'm not saying they're using it as a cover, but whenever they do their traffic stops, that's where they are. So I guess that probably should have been a question I would have asked the uh, officers about the procedure for them, but how long does this car get to sit in the road? Broken down, you can pass by and see that the tires are flat. Okay. I made some calls. I haven't gotten an answer yet. Thank you. Any other questions on that? If not, we'll move on to... Excuse uh, me. I have uh, another question. Okay. What's the law as Ms. Benjamin stated, about people doing landscaping, and it's not just Orange Avenue. I saw it today, where they're blowing the excess chips and leaves and everything in the street, and as quick as they blow it in the street, it goes back up on the sidewalk and the yards. And it's not just residential. Even out on Nova Road, when they're doing the mediums, I don't know who the contract company is, but they're blowing it in the road also. So I don't know if it's just a habit that the landscapers have to make it have a polished look or if it's just convenient to, to just blow it out in the street and let the cars, I guess, push it over to the side where it goes down into the storm water. So I'm sure if the residents are responsible for that grass issue we talked about last week. The landscapers need to use consideration that um, it's either going in the sewage system or it's going to get dragged down the street and blown on someone else's property or back up in there. So 
I saw that today, Mrs. Benjamin, that guy. And I mean, he had some trash and it was in the street. And it was all yard trash, but it was still too much for a resident to blow in the street. As quick as you pass, it's just going back and forth, which means it's going to settle anywhere. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that can be addressed, too, from the information that Charles gave us in the redevelopment area plan, too. So that, that is something we can um, take a look at. Uh, You're welcome. Um, if there are any other questions on well, item number seven, action item amendment to the midtown redevelopment plan? I'm hoping that everyone has had a chance to um, read it. Um, Charles and Reed has made all the necessary corrections um, to it. Um, Professor Huffman also um, was in agreement with it. I want to thank everybody for um, attending the workshop to make sure that we got it right. The workshop was very um, useful. So uh, if there are no other questions dealing with the uh, amendment to the Midtown Redevelopment Plan, and since we have no one in the audience, I'd like a motion to approve. Um, once it is approved, a move back to the City Commission, I believe, correct, Reed? That's can correct. I can I sure, you can ask a question. Mm -hmm. On page one, the asterisk next to midtown, it referred originally to a footnote that's no longer there. On page one? Uh -huh. The asterisk is the second line. Mm -hmm. You see what she's talking about on the corner? Yeah, I do. That that should have gone away. You're, that's that's good catch. And we'll we'll make sure before it gets out that that's cleaned up. Um, and Mr. Chairman, uh, that that timing for the the uh, the review by the City Commission, we were in second reading uh, because it was continued to I think November 14th, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have time in a day to bring the new commission up to speed. Oh, okay. We'll we'll uh, we'll reconvene on first reading on the 5th of December, and then the uh, in two weeks thereafter we'll have our our uh, second reading. Ms. Hurd. I did uh, call Mr. Bryan and let him know that my name was omitted on the second page or the first page <coughs> of the Midtown Redevelopment Plan, Midtown Redevelopment Area Board. That was not on purpose, but <laughs> we sure will, we'll make sure it's in there. <laughs> Maybe we'll put bigger font in there for you, because um, that, that was not good. Thank you. Okay, thank you for, for noting that. I did call it. And, and if it's going to the next commission, I'm sure y'all will change that on um, the city commission agency, too, so. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. With all the noted corrections, I move the adoption of the uh, action plan for the amendment to the Midtown Redevelopment Plan. Second. You heard the motion. It's been seconded in the discussion. If not, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh. Oh. Just one quick question. How, how do you know what was the language that we finally ended up with? Mike. You got to pay attention to the master plan. Oh, it's in the very back. Appendix B. Appendix B. They'll insert the Midtown Master Plan. There. How do I know I have to deal with it? It goes back over to you. I had this wrote down. Mm -hmm. Master plans listed in various places in, in this redevelopment plan. If I'm looking at the markup, if you look at section 5.1 under economic development objective, in that first paragraph, uh, 
target public intervention and economic incentives to encourage private investment, uh, et cetera, et cetera, consistent with the, this with the redevelopment plan and the Midtown Master Plan, <laughs> Appendix B. Okay, and then uh, if you look at Section 5.3.8. Actually, 5.3.7. It's, it's it's all throughout. 5.2.3. There's numerous references to the um, to the to the Midtown Master Plan. Are are you referring, Mr. McGee, to a change that the board uh, recommended at some point to, to to basically say that references to the Midtown Master Plan will include the plan as it's updated in the future? Is that? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Okay, I, I think well, that. I'm actually. Uh, following up on is in the last month's meeting we wanted to make sure that we had all of these uh, references to the code and that it would fit into the, uh, in, into the ordinance in, in accordance with what we have been talking about. Isn't that section 5.51 to amend the city land development code to adopt the building form principles and design guidelines that are based on unique characteristics of the new town? Yeah, and then 5.5.2 as well, There's that addresses further uh, LDC amendments yeah, that have to be consistent with the master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I call for the <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion. Motion passes. Um, Charles. Uh, I guess you want me to do the redevelopment project updates uh, you're going to talk about. Right, um, because the board priorities, um, we will wait until we have a city commission meeting to, to bring that back. Okay. So we can go on into the redevelopment project updates and um, do your um, report dealing with the um, light up Midtown. I want to make sure we um, discuss that also. First of all, I'd like to thank the board and um, the community for uh, supporting us uh, during the PMG uh, uh, stockholder interviews. We had uh, uh, 25, I think it was 25 or 26 interviews uh, during that time frame that they were here that Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and in addition to that, we had the, the workshop. Uh, that Thursday, so I, I thank the board members for participating. I thank the, the audience that are looking, um, that are viewing us on TV, uh, the people who took the time out to come and uh, sit down and talk with PMG. Uh, I think it was uh, a productive meeting with them according to what, what they told us. Uh, it was productive. They have gathered a lot of information, and so we're looking forward to um, to continue that discussion with them and bringing back a, a report that would assist us in uh, with the with the uh, master plan. Uh, as far as the light up midtown events uh, is concerned, uh, we've been having meetings every Thursday uh, for the last uh, I say last month or so. We've been meeting with uh, members of the community. We formed a committee. Uh, we call it light up midtown. Uh, committee uh, to discuss the different events that we are having. Um, right now, uh, the first event is the uh, Light Up Midtown Health uh, Fair. I commend the Belushi County Health Department uh, in assisting us with that event. Right now, we had to cut it off. Uh, we, have more, we have at least 31 health vendors that already signed up for that event. So it's going to be a great event. Um, for the community, that's the same day that we're going to do the light up 
uh, Midtown um, ceremony with the businesses and residents of the area. We've added to that event um, a movie, Light Up Midtown Movie. Okay, that's going to be for the kids. We're trying to attract the kids uh, for that event, so they'll be there. Um, I, I met with Walmart uh, a couple of Sundays ago, and Walmart is going to contribute a uh, live Christmas tree for that event. They're going to give us some decorations so the kids can, can decorate the tree there uh, when they come. Um, they're, they're giving us candy for the parade, everything pretty much I asked them for. Uh, they gave to me. Uh, I'm waiting now. Uh, they suggested that I go online and uh, submit for a $2,500 grant, which I did that Monday after meeting with them on Sunday. I came back and I submitted a grant, and uh, I'm waiting to hear from that that grant. Uh, I do have uh, some sponsors already that are committed. Uh, uh, the Hilton uh, committed uh, $500, which they have already given me that check. Vitas has committed $2,000. Uh, and I got some other commitments out there that uh, uh, it's going to help with sponsorship. Uh, but everything is moving forward as far as the, the health fair is concerned. The parade uh, is perking up. I'm getting, I got some applications in today for the parade and also for the uh, gospel fest. And uh, so uh, the, the step show and all the events are coming together as we continue to meet. We have another meeting this Thursday. And... Uh, it looked like it's going to be uh, some, some good events for the community. We've got community support uh, at all the meetings. that They come out. They bring back reports. They are out there. I'm asking the board to assist me in, in finding sponsors. We, we need some more sponsors. We need people um, to participate. Uh, we still, uh, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Uh, Jameson, she's been helping us trying to get um, people to participate participate. I think uh, Reverend Tooley, he's been walking the streets since he know I'm lame. <laughs> he, uh, he's been helping me out uh, uh, walking and talking to the businesses and, and they've been calling me and uh, uh, submitting applications and, and contributions. So uh, I think it's going to be a, uh, a great community event. Uh, I think uh, as far as the parade is concerned, uh, my parade person told me he has four bands that's committed already. Great. Great. Uh, and so um, uh, we're working hard. We got community involved and engaged, and I think we're going to have uh, some wonderful activities for the Christmas holidays. Um, Charles, I, I, you are doing a, a great job putting this together. Reed, I had a, a quick question because he has sponsors, and being that we are the Midtown Redevelopment Board, we give to the uh, Juneteenth. Um, I would like to see if we can. Uh, also be a the lead sponsor um, for this Midtown event. So do we have any funds available that we can contribute to this um, event? We can look at uh, at the funding for that. we got to just keep in mind the Juneteenth and and uh, but we, we probably have some funds that we can put into that. Well, so I'll talk to Charles about that. What I would like to do is um, ask the board that we do a motion to at least give 2500 to the uh, Midtown Light Up um, Midtown as a sponsor, and then we'll talk with the commissioners to see maybe they might donate funds also um, to the event. But I think we need to be the lead entity, so I'm going to ask that we find those funds. So um, if I can have a motion, Mr. Chairman, I know that it came from the board. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that the Midtown Redevelopment Board donate $2,500 toward the Light Up Midtown events, especially the parade. Second. You heard the motion has been second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion passes. So, Reed, will you please um, try to address that tomorrow and uh, get back with me? And if we can send an email out to the board, let them know that it got approved. And we'll talk to the commissioners also. Uh, thank you, John. Uh -oh. Dr. James. I know uh, we canceled the cleanup. I know we canceled, the, had to cancel the cleanup, but is there anyone we can talk to at Public Works who can just go down the street, Martin Luther King, 
and cut the grass out the in street. the street. Okay. Just I, it just seems like to me seems like that's an hour and a half of whatever if you have the correct tool because we're we're going to decorate and all that but the street um, it's just the in the street I'm not even talking about the sidewalk right now but in the street if they just go down there and just cut the grass and stick it out of the street if we're going to decorate at least at least we <coughs> can do that if the, if there's something um, what should I say um, weed killer that you just I'm afraid of that because of the, the animals, the dogs and stuff. But if there's some weed killer, you can just drop in there to kill it. That seems like an hour and a half worth of work on Martin Luther King. I don't know about the other streets. Okay. I'll get with them. So you had anything else, Charles? Uh, any other questions of Charles from the board? If not, Charles, I'd like to say um, we thank you for the great job you do. I'm sure the board will support these events and um, make this a successful project to start and show the young kids and the community that we can also celebrate Christmas in our community also. So thank you for the hard work. Thank you for working with the board. And um, thank you for supporting them. Um, at this present time, we have no one in the audience except one just came in if, uh, <laughs> so to give a time to sit down I'd like to start with board comments at this time uh, Ms. Cato I would just like to say uh, in our 11th meeting of 2012 I think we have come a long way this year. We had some battles to fight, but we've done a good job conquering some of them and still fighting against some. And I wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And Mr. Bryant, see you next week. Orlando. <laughs> Go Wildcats. <laughs> I'll be, I have his back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Benjamin uh, I'd like to say uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and also that um, you're going to be stuck with me longer in December because the planning board uh, want me to stay on with them so I the planning board <laughs> represents it here thank you thank you Ms. Benjamin I'd just like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And to Mr. Bryant, thanks so much for all the work that he's putting into this. Um, some of us, actually, a lot of us are coming to the meetings and helping, so we're all going to be there. Um, but it's really good when you see this kind of, um, the, uh, the whole um, thing we're having from the public where they're coming out, mm -hmm. and the real partnership with it. So it's great. Thank you very much. Dr. Jameson. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and go Rattlers. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, Ken. Uh, I would like to suggest that we look toward a, um, a listing of what we need in these five sub centers that we're talking about so, I mean, just things that that we know that are in there you know such as a bus stop uh, a, a postal just even nothing more than a mailbox or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also if if we can get from the group that's doing this study for us an idea of the size of some of the retail and mercantile establishments that they're going to suggest. Uh, for instance, uh, we can't really, in, in my humble opinion, we can't really look toward a, a real supermarket such as Publix. But we could look toward trying to establish five 
little ones that all work together, even perhaps under one ownership, and get some of the advantages of, of that. Um, but and we need to know how much land that some of these uses might require, just so that we can prepare ourselves for whoever comes and asks for um, what we would consider a non-conforming use right in the middle of, of what we've been trying to develop. So I, I think it's a, another workshop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that they will be meeting. Good, by the way. Yeah, I think they will be meeting with us um, on each module also that is being produced. So when we do meet with them again, we can make sure we bring those um, questions up. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how we said it was going to work. And happy also. Thanksgiving to everybody. Mr. Williams. I'd just like to say that I'm, I'm really, really tickled pink about the movement on, on the, the redevelopment plan and as, as well as uh, the light of Dayton. I think it's important that, that the citizens you know, in the community see some, some movement, see some activity, and understand that something is happening. You know, it gives them uh, the incentive, to, to, incentive to, to get involved. I think it's a wonderful thing. And, um, and Charles, you know, big pat on the back for you to you for for all your hard work and for the idea in the first place, you know, it's, it's a really, really good idea. And I just want to wish everyone a really, really happy Thanksgiving. You know, don't eat too, eat too much turkey because you got Christmas and New Year's <laughs> coming up. So pace yourself. <laughs> Mr. Tooley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One thing that I do want to say is that in going around and attempting to get the sponsors and getting involvement with Light Up Midtown. It's wonderful to see hope again generated in Midtown. One of the comments that I'm constantly hearing is we're glad to see that the city is beginning to invest into Midtown. We don't understand the impact that that's having on the community. If the Midtown community gets vitally energized again, you would be amazed what will happen in Daytona Beach because it is actually the hub of Daytona. That's where everything spokes, the spokes come off from because the first thing that's seen if you come into 92, I-4, if you come down 400, you still got to come through Midtown. So we are excited to see that the community is invigorated again. The other thing I want to say is that we're excited to see so many people again interested in what's going on with Daytona Beach. The apathy I think is finally leaving and people are realizing that we've got to get involved to make a difference and that makes a huge difference. I want to thank Mr. Bryant for the wonderful work he's doing because guys he He's doing a lot of stuff above and beyond the call of duty. And I think that he deserves appreciation for that. <laughs> and of course, we've got to thank his boss for allowing him to do it. <laughs> but we also want to thank our chairman for doing a wonderful job throughout the year with what he's doing. Yeah. Now, I said all that because I'm waiting for some of y'all to invite me to come to eat Thanksgiving dinner. But anyway, y'all have a happy Thanksgiving and go Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Hurt. Thank you. Um, I will not repeat the things that Mr. Tooley has already said, and especially about the Midtown and uh, Mr. Bryant. We have done a great job this past year, and with new members coming on board, you just jumped right in it, not bashful <laughs> at all, and it just brought good ideas to us. I would also like to say that um, those of you with children, grandchildren, if you get them computers, teach them how to use the computers. The um, 
the uh, areas to go into and everything because it can be very dangerous. And don't let people come to your house and just go on your computer. Okay? I would also like to say next month, yes, Light Up Midtown is great. And I want everybody to enjoy it. And especially to come to my booth. <laughs> Do I have the floor? <laughs> To come to my booth because, you know, my thing is I have this, that, and things and the unique gifts that you will not find anywhere. And when I say unique gifts, I'm talking about Obama, uh, Mary McCry Bethune, Black History, and Daytona Beach. I also like to say for next um, meeting. Mrs. Cato and others, if you all would like to celebrate birthdays for December, you may celebrate my birthday on the 11th and Mr. Bryan's birthday, I believe, on the 10th. Do I need to repeat that again? <laughs> okay, it'll be in the minutes, but I would want you to know it before the minutes come out. Okay, we will be celebrating our birthdays, Mr. Burgess. Um, if you want to give, uh, do anything for the <laughs> <laughs> She's full of commercials today. Um, and above all, you know, I have to say this. You don't have to write it. Above all. <laughs> above all. Let's go. Wow. Rattlers. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I like the uh, camaraderie that we <laughs> have uh, on this board. Uh, just a couple of things, Charles and um, Reed, especially since we're getting ready to do Light Up Midtown, we need to look at the sign that Huger Park is totally faded out. Yes. So we might need to take a look at that. You know, try to get it done. Also, the trees on Magnolia still have not been done. So we need to um, look at that also. Um, uh, trees? The, yeah. the trees have been, they were, uh, how long ago was that, Charles, that you had them out there? About a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. they, they did go out there. They've, uh, they, so since then, they're, if you go out there, you'll see they're all trimmed up, and they forgot they the, they're, they're all dead. the the dead ones are gone. They're, no. they're, they're put sod over, so no, the dead ones are still there. Okay, I, I rode I rode by there before I came to the meeting, the, the triple check. So if well, you go if you go on I'll, Frank go on the block between Reva and Franklin Street, and you will see dead magnolia trees. So I try Mr. to Chair. I, I, I try to ride and. Um, check those things so please um, let's, let's try to do it we'll have those looked at I appreciate that <coughs> Mr. Chair do we have to make a motion that if nothing has come to fruitation to rectify that situation that the trees be removed considering that it's something that they have to find time for those workers to come out and do that because this has been a year and some months that we've been dealing with. Uh, I know for the past two two months we we have, but um, I, I'm hoping that this is the last time we really have to talk about it. So we'll uh, we we'll give it to next month. Um, after the election, I've had the opportunity to talk with the mayor elect. I have a meeting with the uh, commissioner elect. And I'm hoping they continue down the lines that this board have really set up to move this community forward. Uh, I think this is one of the, again, the best boards to work on because we, you're, every one of y'all are making a change and the change affects the community. And without y'all, without your support, it couldn't be done. So I want to thank you for the great workshop that um, happened last month. Um, and if we have to do it again, we will. Um, I thank you for your support throughout the year. 
um, and is much appreciated. And I hope that we can continue to move forward. I wish everybody a safe um, travel if you're leaving for the holidays and for the weekend on the Classic. I'm sure it made the best team win, which would probably be the Wildcats. But uh, with that being said, Just uh, no respect. <laughs> Reed, would you have a comment, anything, or Ben? Uh, no, just go Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, we root for Mayla, too. <laughs> ben. <laughs> With 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 that in mind, um Camille, did you have any comments or you just came to visit us late? Come forward. Okay. State your name and uh, for the record. Camille Holder Brown um, used to be two eighteen Carl Brickley Circle, but it's about to be eight thirty seven George Ingram. Who know that address? Okay. Yes, there are lots of um, collard green plants and kale growing. Mm -hmm. um, the new fall garden is growing, um, so. Who knows, maybe we can get us a farmer's market going in our neighborhood soon. That'll be good. Um, I'm helping out with the Light at Midtown Committee. Very excited about that. We're going to be doing smoothies and movies again, showing the whiz out in the park. I know this is not the final flyer because it'll say that a movie and stuff on it. Um, we're just here pushing along and um, been... We had a new baby uh, addition to our family. Yeah little uh, Menelik Kofi and um, we're still here and we are very excited we're not going anywhere Midtown Eco Village hopefully this coming year we can get a juice bar going we've been hustling and doing our thing and we're really excited about what's happening thank you everyone for all your hard work everybody and if you need anything or any smoothies you know where to find me love you all Thank you. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat any turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, uh, make sure that that's advertised, that Midtown Light Up, Light Up Midtown is advertised in the um, Times. It has been. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if there are not any more, any, any other things, uh -huh. I have a motion to adjourn. You can sing a solo. Oh, I'm sorry. Any question? And the Statement. Can okay. I just shut up and I give you your preference of time. Your street, uh, public works to put just put a, a strong uh, sterling in it. It won't affect the you know it, it go down the cracks. Animals won't be bothered by it, and it won't be bothered by runoff because if you put it in right on the cracks. It's gone. But to use don't use something like uh, weed is gone or anything like that. That's what. That's what hardware stores sell people who don't know what to buy. So it's something something simple they can put down and just get rid of it? Public Works has got probably gallons, probably 55 gallon drums of sterilants over there that they kill the grass around their uh, different uh, ditches. You mm -hmm. see they, they go down there and blow the ditches with uh, a spray that just kills everything down there. Surely it kills the grass in the street. All right. Okay. I hope so. And it would be nice for Christmas. Thank you. We're, we're talking about that. We're, we're talking about that. Uh, <laughs> if, if that's it, um, I have a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn the Midtown Redevelopment Board meeting. I second. Thank you. Thank you. So move. First time. <laughs>